Hi, Ben here. So I've been making concrete projects using Legos as the form for quite some time now, but I thought it was time to do a more comprehensive look at the process. So we're going to show you a few different ways to do it. We're going to pour directly into the Legos to make these cute little castles. They're uh, for our pet squirrel, Gary. And we're also going to show you how you can make products with them. And these are dish racks that I'm working on. And we actually used the Legos to make a silicone mold. Uh, and now we can make as many of these as we want and just keep reusing that silicone mold. I'm even going to show you how I clean the Legos after they come in contact with the concrete. So without further ado, let's get started. Let's start with one of the castles where we're going to pour the concrete directly into the Legos. Concrete won't stick to the smooth surfaces of the Legos, but it will stick to the bumpy part. So I use flat tiles wherever I expect the concrete to come in contact with the Lego bricks. The only thing tricky about this process is the fact that you're actually building the negative space. You see, we're going to pour concrete into this, so we actually want to make the space around the castle, not the castle itself. So I'm actually building the mold upside down, starting with the top of the tower, and now I'm using angled pieces to create a taper before finishing the mold with the vertical part of the tower. For this tower, I'm going to use Quickcrete 5000, which is a readily available concrete mix that has about twice the strength of typical concrete. This is a complete concrete mix, so all you need to do is add water. Now, it does have small pieces of gravel about a quarter inch in diameter, so pressing the concrete down into the corners of the mold and then tapping and vibrating it aggressively are really important to help make sure that the concrete settles all the way and fills in all the gaps around the gravel. Now you will see a little bit of water leak out through the cracks of the Legos, but it's really not a big deal. I let the concrete cure for 48 hours before removing the Lego bricks. The outer pieces come off quite easily because I can use my Lego tool to pull them down towards the outside. Removing the ones that are inside the platform is a little bit more tricky. I use needle nose pliers to remove the ones in the center which relieves the pressure and makes the outer ones easier to pull out. A few of the small tiles that were wedged in between the top of the castle walls got a little bit stuck and these were the only two pieces that were slightly damaged. I could have avoided this damage if I had made the gaps in the top of the wall a little bit wider and used two pieces to fill them in just so a single piece wasn't trapped by concrete. The bricks will have a little bit of concrete residue on them and occasionally some concrete will get stuck between the bumps. Now this can all be brushed off with a wet toothbrush but I find that the easiest way to remove it is to put all the bricks in a mesh laundry bag and then put another larger bag over the initial bag. I've had the zipper on these bags break before and it scattered Legos all over my washing machine. I just throw the whole bag into the washing machine, set it on cold, and add a cup of bleach in addition to some detergent. The bleach does a really good job at removing any of the residue and the vibration from the washer shakes loose most of the concrete particles that get stuck between the bumps. Every once in a while I'll still find a piece that has a little piece of concrete wedged in it, but I normally just pop that out with a toothpick. We made these castles for Gary the chipmunk because we wanted a place where we could leave him some granola without Henry the bunny coming in and eating it all. We didn't however take precautions to prevent Gary's nemesis Chester from taking over the castles and stealing all the granola. Alright, castles for rodents is kind of silly. Let's see if we can actually use this technique to make something somewhat useful. I've been very dissatisfied with the options that I have for dish racks. Most of the time I use a dishwasher so I just need a really small one where I can place the random coffee coffee cup or cereal bowl temporarily when I don't need to run a full load in the dishwasher. This time I'm going to use Moldstar 30 silicone mold making materials to make a mold so I don't have to make the negative space with the Legos. I can just build the exact dish rack that I want and then pour silicone around it. Made a very simple design that just uses a few sloped Lego bricks on the side that will drain into the sink. I used my hot glue gun to secure the Legos down to a piece of melamine. Don't worry, the hot glue will peel off the Legos later. I then hot glued some scrap pieces of wood around the Lego contraption and made sure to really seal all the seams, corners, and edges. I used some GE silicone sealant to seal the mold from the inside. I let the GE silicone sealant sit for 24 hours to fully cure before mixing the two-part silicone mold-making material and pouring it into the mold. 
After letting the silicone cure for 24 hours, I used a knife to cut away the hot glue and pull the wood pieces apart. The Moldstar 30 is quite strong but has a nice amount of rubbery flex to it and it was able to peel it off of the Lego structure. Some of the Legos got a little bit stuck inside so I just had to remove those by hand. I used a chisel to scrape away the glue that was holding the Legos down and I'll probably run these through the washing machine just to get rid of any little pieces of silicone that may have formed in between the bricks. When it's a liquid, the silicone really works its way into all the cracks and crevices. So I used a razor blade just to trim a few of the little feathery pieces that had formed between the cracks. For the first dish rack, I'm going to use a premium concrete mix. I'm going to use Quickrete's countertop mix in white. This is a very fine grain mix. There's no large pieces of gravel in it at all. And it also has some additives that make it easier to mix and provide extra strength. I think this one is about 6,000 PSI. I mixed it in a tub and then poured it into the silicone mold. And for this first one, I want a few bubbles in there. So I'm going to tap it a little bit to get out some of the bubbles, but I'm not going to over vibrate it to make it perfectly smooth. I want to have a little bit of a travertine type texture. 48 hours later I popped it out of the mold and now just have to wait for it to thoroughly dry for the color to lighten to a sort of beige-ish off-white. The mold is completely undamaged and I can use it over and over again. So I switched back to Quickrete 5000 and made a second one. Now for this one I'm vibrating it a lot and I'm going to really try to get out a lot of the air bubbles so that you can see a little bit of the contrast. I really love how you can see the brick pattern in the finished concrete products. Now I could seal these, but I find that when I pour concrete into a waterproof material like silicone, the finish comes out so smooth and hard that a sealant really isn't needed. Also, these pieces are small enough that I could just put them in the dishwasher to wash them. I was mostly planning on using these dish racks just for cups and bowls, but I thought it might be a good idea to make it so that it could also accommodate a plate. So to do this, I'm going to make an additional block that the plate could lean against that fits into the grooves of the dish rack. So I put a combination of blue painter's tape and some duct tape onto one of the Lego bricks so that the concrete piece that fits in the groove would be a little bit thinner than the groove itself. I then mixed and poured the concrete and made this nice little stop block that is perfect for leaning a plate up against. Once you have the mold made, you can produce these dish racks for about a dollar's worth of concrete. I think they look pretty cool and I like that they don't take up that much counter space but still give me a place just to set that random mug. I really love this idea of using Lego bricks not just to prototype things but to actually make the molds that could go into production to mass produce them. I've been using this technique for a long time and I've made everything from small concrete boxes to an entire backsplash for my Boston loft and even entire pieces of furniture. So give it a shot, and if you make something using any of these techniques, tag me in on Instagram, I would love to see them. Check out some of our other videos, and don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Thanks, bye.